Hello and welcome to this video regarding SOLIDWORKS Static Simulation with me, Mars Brining. Okay, so um, first off, what is a static study? So its full title is a linear static finite element analysis study. All right, so what is it? Uh, so it's a numerical method of approximating uh, the displacements and resulting stresses in a model um, by breaking geometry into a set of finite elements and solving the appropriate partial differential equations based on specified boundary condition assumptions. Okay, so um, basically what this is saying is that we're approximating displacements by applying um, specific forces onto our onto our model, and that we're then with these forces applied onto our model splitting our model down into very small elements okay so we're making a finite number of elements uh, within the model all right and then from that we're measuring the uh, the displacements that are occurring by this force being applied to it and then from these displacements we can work out um, what the the strain is on each element from its first position to its uh, displaced position and then from that strain we can work out uh, the resulting stresses um, in regards to uh, Young's modulus. So uh, what another way of showing this for instance is I've got uh, this part here okay so you can imagine this is a surface of a of a part and then that when we put it into a study and we do what's called meshing to it we're taking that um, that surface and then we're applying nodes to it. Now these nodes then uh, are joined together and these form elements. So these elements are then, uh, they, they will move when we apply a force to say this specific face. And then the movement is then measured from its original position to the new position after we've applied the force. And the, the difference between it is, is what's called a strain and then from the strain, we can then use that number in Young's modulus to work out the resulting stresses within the model. So um, what is its use in SOLIDWORKS? So the idea is that you can um, create a model, okay, create whatever geometry you need, and then apply um, a static study to it, and then work out what the the peak stresses and the displacements will be within the model and see if it perform, performs in the way that you expect. Now, obviously that means that you have to do less testing on the products after you make it, when you've actually finished your design to know whether it can withstand the kind of loadings that you want. Um, or at least know that you're in a Pacific ballpark area. All right, remember this is, we're approximating displacement. So simulation is always an approximation which very much depends on how good our assumptions are on on whatever study that we're 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 creating. So at least when we come to test it after we've made it, we know that it should roughly fail around say this number here, okay, which we've got from the simulation. And it means that you can very quickly make design changes to our model without having to physically build it in the real world um, and then test it. So it's not designed as well for like structural engineers or people that just do FEA analysis on um, you know all day long. It, it, it's meant for the, uh, the you know Joe Blogs designer that literally wants to measure um, their models and then work out whether they're they're, they're going in the right direction uh, with their design. Okay, so let's just, uh, just talk about uh, linear static for a moment. So let's have to concentrate on the word static. So static study, which we're looking at today, um, is um, literally um, looking at a specific section of this uh, equation for universal um, uh, motion. So it's split into different areas. We've got the inertia matrix, the dampening matrix, and the stiffness matrix. And on the other side here, we have a force and time. Okay, so by making some assumptions with a static study, so the first one is that loads are applied slowly, and also that loads are constant, it means that we can remove the inertia matrix and dampening matrix from the equation. 
It also means that we can remove time, which are dependent. You can see here we have time, that these areas here are time dependent. So it just leads us with the stiffness matrix. Okay, and then by what we can do is by uh, inversing the, or taking away the inverse of K on this side and from our force, we're left with X, all right? So this is the what we're what we're looking for the displacement is what we're looking for um, within our model, and obviously from the displacements we can work out the stresses. Just a quick sanity check um, before you start a static analysis. Just just ask yourself: Is the system dynamic? Are the loads dynamic, or are they are they being applied slowly? Remember that dynamic analysis can that the loadings for a dynamic study can be up to 20 or 30 times for instance or uh, they can be a lot larger than um, the loadings that you get on a static study so just think about that before you go ahead and create a static study okay so the second half is linear so linear means that it's in full compliance with Hooke's law so Young's modulus which assumes that the linear relation between um, applied loads and induced responses it, you know, it's a ratio, it's a, it's a straight line. So what we're saying here is that this is the, a linear analysis. So there's a ratio between the force and the displacements. All right, and obviously this line will vary between um, materials. It's always straight, okay? So basically a static study will not go um, above yielding or it will be inaccurate is probably the best word to say um, above yielding. So if, for instance, you apply your forces to your model and they, um, they go above yield, so the stresses are quite high, uh, you may find yourself in this kind of area over here. So yielding is a, probably about here for uh, the material. You know, ultimate strength is probably around here somewhere. And then it will start to... Um, the displacement will change depending on, on the material. So once we go above yield, we're not following um, uh, any relationship between the force and the displacement anymore. At that point, you may want to consider doing a non-linear analysis rather than a static analysis because the static analysis will be um, inaccurate above yielding. Okay, so yes, we're assuming that the yield, the yield, we're not going above yield, okay, and the deflections are small, such that stress sniffing and softening does not occur. All right, so it's important that we bear those in mind when we actually run the study. Okay, so let's have a little general workflow for a, um, a, um, a static study. So we're going to take um, some geometry here, which is this spanner. Um, what we're then going to do is from that we're going to obviously load the model in and then we're going to think about simplifying the model to remove anything that is not important um, so when we create when we create and run a study it, it's quicker basically so for instance um, this where it says lightweight spanner and 10 for instance they have no um, effect on the um, strength of this spanner but when I go to create the mesh, so I create all my um, my nodes and my lines, um, it will try and mesh around the this this set of this set of letters. And obviously, the more um, elements that we have within our model, the longer it takes for SolidWorks to solve the study. So what we're doing is we're removing um, any geometry which is not necessary. All right. So another one, for instance, would be this bihex on the end of this spanner. Again, I'm going to apply a load in a minute onto this force here, uh, sorry, onto this face here. And therefore, this has no real loading implications or, you know, you know, strength implications for the actual model itself. So I could, for instance, turn that off and just have a circle, for instance, and try and cut down the number of um, elements within my model. So here we go. So I've... Uh, basically clean the model up and removed anything that is unnecessary um, also one other thing is to bear into mind is something called idolization so when we go and put um, simply put when we go and put our model into a study 
the model that is in the study is close as possible to what we'd expect, what we'd build in real life. So we want to try and remove any errors where people have cut corners, for instance, in the modeling process because they couldn't quite make something work or it's not actually physically possible in SOLIDWORKS to do it or well, it's very difficult, we have to take that into account when we actually run a study on it. So ideally, we're aiming for the, the geometry that we have in SOLIDWORKS is exactly the same as the geometry which we have when we build it in real life. So now we've cleaned the model up and we've just confirmed that the, uh, the model is, is accurate to what we want in real life, we would then um, put the model into a, a study all right, so in this case we then need to choose what kind of study we're using, so we're going to use a static study. Uh, we then need to apply material, so for every study to run we need to apply material. Um, literally that um, then allows the software to work out what the stiffness matrix is for um, all our elements that we're going to put in in a minute, and then work out what the stresses and displacements are um, from those elements. Also, um, I'm going to uh, apply loadings to it. So these purple arrows here is a load. All right, so you can imagine in real life that we've got a nut here, and then we're applying a force downwards, in this case, to tighten the nut or loosen the nut. Okay. And then these green items here, so these arrows, are is a restraint, so a fixture. So we're saying that the nut's fixed, and then we're going to apply a certain amount of force here, and we're going to see we'll see whether our spanner can with you know withstand that amount of force so now I do that I'm going to then mesh the model so by doing that and um, you can see it's broken it down into a very small number of um, these are called tetrahedral elements so um, they have a specific element size and that's why there's a, a finite it's called a finite um, element analysis because there's a certain number of these elements which make up my model so you can see it split it all down into very small triangles now not to be confused you can only see the, uh, the the elements on the surface here but the elements actually go all the way through the model so it will completely fill the entirety of my model with triangles basically and in each one of these lines is an element which it's going to measure when I apply a force to it and then after that we have the actual results. So we can see here that there has been a displacement and there's been a, a stress loading in this area here and here. Normally high stress concentrations are uh, displayed in red and then it works its way through as you can see through these greens into this blue. So you can see down here there's actually no loadings at all. All right. Okay, so I'm going to show you an example now. So with any study we have to make some uh, assumptions. So the assumption for this shelf unit here is that uh, we're only interested in the shelf and the brace, so another, no other items in the assembly will be studied. The, t uh, the shelf top has been bonded to the brace, so this area here, the shelf, has been bonded to the brace. Um, all the welds are perfect and the material has no imperfections in it. Uh, the goals of the study, so the shelf must withstand uh, 500 newtons of force being applied directly downwards onto this face here. The maximum uh, displacement for each shelf must be under one millimeter, and the peak stress locations must be under 30 MPa, so it's 30 megapascals. The factor of safety must also be above four. So let's go ahead and then I'll flip into SolidWorks. Okay, so here's our model. So what I'm going to do is I've got two configurations for this assembly. So uh, this shelving unit, I'm only interested in one shelf, not all of them, for this example. So I'm just going to double click onto that configuration. And then you can see uh, I've just got one shelf and then one, um, one brace for it. So from this, I'm then going to go to the simulation uh, menu at the top. So if you don't have this on, by the way, you'd go to Tools and then Add-ins and then you can turn it on in here. Now remember SOLIDWORKS simulation um, is available, the static side of things is available in SOLIDWORKS Premium. All right, so if you have SOLIDWORKS Premium you'll have access to this. Now if I go to simulation and then a new study, 
say there's a lot of different studies in SOLIDWORKS. If you've got premium, you'll have static. If you buy SOLIDWORKS um, Simulation Professional or premium, you'll have access to some more studies, which are these lot down here. So let's call this, um, let's give the study a name. So let's say top load or something like that. And then when I do that, I'll have a simulation tree appear here on the left. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and then set my study out. So first off, I'm going to have a look. So I've got two components in here. So I've got the actual bracket, so my support, and then the actual shelf, it's so, uh, sorry, the, the shelf itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply materials to both of these. So I'm going to right click on there, it says parts, and then go apply materials to all. And what I'm looking for is plain carbon steel. So plain carbon steel has um, roughly a yield of about 220 MPA. So I have to bear that in mind when obviously I run my study that I don't go above that value, otherwise it's gonna either um, start to crack or it's gonna snap immediately. Next thing I'm gonna do is apply a fixture. So I'm just gonna right click on fixtures and go to fix geometry. And then I'm gonna select this inside face here so there would be a pole going through, through this, um, obviously in real life. Now the pole, let's say in this instance, is a lot stiffer than this material. And we're not actually interested in it within the scope of this study. So we're just going to fix the inside face here. So fixing means that no matter how much force I apply on, for instance, towards this face, these faces or the face I've selected here won't, will not move. So it's almost like my anchor point within, the, well, within this study. And one thing to, as well to bear in mind when you um, you have components in the study that mates do not pull through into um, a simulation study. So just like when you'd import like an IGIS or step file for instance, they're just floating there in space. So it's important that when we set our study up that we actually constrain them to one another or tell them how they should react with one another. So when we run the study we don't have anything flying off or reacting in a way that we wouldn't expect. So I know for instance that this brace can't move now because I've, I've tied down this inside face. Now I'm going to apply load to it so I'm going to right click on the external loads folder and then go to force and I'm going to select this top face here. Now with this I'm going to put 500 newtons and I'm going to make sure the arrow is going in the right direction which is downwards and then go OK. And then after this I'm just going to apply a connection set. So connection sets are something that you would normally apply at assembly level when you have one or or two or more components within your assembly which you need to say to the study how they'd react to one another. So one of my assumptions was that the uh, the shelf is actually bonded to this brace. Okay, So to do that I'm just going to right click on connections here and go to contact set and I'm going to select that there's a bonded contact. So there's a number of different contact sets in here, I won't go through them in this example. I'm going to put it on bonded and I'm going to select this face here and I need to select the top face from this bracket. So to do that I'm just going to right click on it and then go select other and then I'm just going to make sure I pick the right face which is that one. So it's the top face of this bracket, go OK and it's going to make sure that this body here all right, is that one there is going to be bonded correctly to this, um, this bracket. Once I've done that I'm just going to go and create a mesh. So this is where I add my finite number of elements into the model so I'm going to split it into a mathematical model now. So I'm going to go create mesh, and then I'm just going to go ahead and then select uh, the diff there's different mesh types in here. There's a standard mesh and a curvature based mesh. Um, I'm going to put it on curvature based mesh for the example, um, and I'm going to put the element size to 15, and then go OK, and just let it mesh it. Now, basically, the element size. If if I just show you the mesh again. I just right click and go create mesh. In here I've got a maximum value of 15 and a minimum of 3. So what it does in areas where there's no um, complex geometry it will create large elements and in areas where the um, the mesh is more complex or sorry the, uh, the geometry is more complex it will try and make the, uh, the elements smaller to take into account that this, for instance like the curvature so this fillet here for instance. So if I just go and remesh it again you can see here that these elements are much smaller than these ones up here. 
Now I've done that, I'm just going to go ahead and then run the study. So I'm going to right click on the top level here and then go run. And just see exactly what happens. Okay, so the study is now being complete. Now at the moment, um, my plot here, so by default you'll get three plots. You get one that's called stress, one that's called displacement, and one that's called strain. Now the two that are most interest to me at the moment are stress and displacement. So stress will allow me to um, see where the peak stresses are within the model. So you can see the total here is, um, basically this is uh, in Pascals, so if I knock the um, D6 digits off, it's basically saying to me that it's, it's 80 MPA. Uh, what I might do is actually show this plot in um, in mega pascals rather than pascals. It's a much easier number to look at. So if I right click and go to edit definition on the actual um, um, stress plot, and I'm just gonna change it to uh, MPA, and then go okay. Another thing as well I'd just like to point out in here is the actual displacement. So you may have noticed when the, the results came through here that this displacement looks quite large. All right. Now, some people don't realize that it's actually um, scaled to make it more obvious where the displacements are happening. So if I, at the moment, it's 21 times uh, larger than it actually would be in real life. So if I go true scale, and then go OK. You can see it moves. It has moved a little bit, all right. So it has dipped down a bit, which looks more like one point. Um, it looks like a couple of mil at least. So what we can do is have a look at the displacement. So it's a different different plot. So again, it's exaggerated at the moment. But the maximum um, displacement is in the section in red here, which is at 1.5 millimeters. So I need to get that number, remember, down below one millimeter. We also, for my stress concentration, need to get that number down to at least fifth. No, sorry, at least um, thirty. Okay. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and make some changes to the model. So I'm going to go and right-click on this component here, and then go to Open Part, and then I'm just going to go ahead and then um, unsupport. Well, I'm going to change one of the uh, support arms and I'm going to put three in. So I'm going to go OK on that and add another one in like that. And then I'm just going to flip back to the model, so the assembly file, and go back to my study. And I, all I need to do now is just right click on this and then go run again. It's very easy. It'll just go and remesh it again for me. And then I'm just going to run the study and see exactly. Um, how it's got on, so it's down to um, 32 MPA now. So it's very close to my, my goal. Um, also, um, what I can do in this is work out a factor of safety plot. So a factor of safety, if I, at this point I'm uh, wanting to have a look at one, I can right click on the results folder and go to factor of safety plot. And then I'm gonna do it for all bodies. I'll leave the multiplication factor at one. And then the factor of safety I'm actually interested in is four. So I'm just gonna hit okay. Now at this point, this plot, at first it looks quite worrying, but actually this plot is actually going, the scale is going to some extreme. So I'm going from factor of safety with six, which is the lowest. So I know already that it's above, um, it's already above a factor of safety of four. And this number here is very large, okay? So what I'm gonna do is if I double click on the plot here, I can get to the actual legend for it, and I'm gonna say that the minimum here is say um, one, okay? Actually just say that the minimum is four, because at, at that point I know I'm in trouble. And then the, um, let's say the maximum is 10. And if I go okay, I'd expect everything to be um, at least at one, okay? So um, there we go, so uh, sorry, of 10, sorry, not 1, 10. So anything that's in blue is at 10. And you see I've got nothing in red here, which means that the uh, the plot is, um, is good. So there's no chance that my factor of safety is going to fall below that region. 
Now, just to prove that this works, if I go back to the original model, and um, there we go, and let me just say if I turn this arm back off again, and I'll just go and rerun the study once again. Okay, so if I have a look at the factor of safety now, you can see in certain areas here, it's gone below four. So in this case, um, I need to tend to those areas. So obviously putting that, removing that arm again is no good. So what I need to do now is um, just just to double check where, all, where, where everything is below four, if I right click on the plot and go to ISO clipping, this allows me to turn off areas which are below a certain value so or above the certain value so if I go to if I put this to 4 and then go OK you can see these areas here where my factor of safety is less there's also some on these edges here as well OK so I need to take those into account obviously those are the areas where I need to strengthen to allow my uh, factor of safety of 4 to be maintained so let me go back to the model once again and I'll go and uh, just add that arm back in very quickly. This time though I'm going to turn on some additional um, supports. So remember that my factor of safety was 32 before. So if I just turn these on here, some additional supports and then go back to my model. Now at this point if I just load my, my study again down the bottom here and then go ahead and try and run it. Let's see what happens this time. Okay, so my by adding in those additional supports, my um, my uh, peak stress is now under thirty. Okay, my displacement. If I double click on that, you can see is actually quite small now. So it's a, it's a very small number. So it's uh, nine point four to. Uh, power of minus two so it's gone down dramatically from um, only having two braces in um, and my factor of safety again um, is it's all above 10 so it's looking good okay so that's a uh, brief introduction to static analysis hopefully um, you've learned something from that thanks for watching